Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Myung Jin Unsan. So Vesak for us marks birth, enlightenment, and parinirvana. The awakening part is obviously the one that most of us are involved with uh, practicing Buddhism. Now in July, in the beginning of July, there are a number of us who will be taking uh, precepts. And uh, the precepts, for those of us who don't know, are basically guides for ethical living. I tie that into Vesak because if the Buddha himself weren't observing what turned out to be the five precepts and more precepts later, then odds are he probably wouldn't have become the Buddha. I don't think very many of us would be able to awaken without observing at least the five precepts. And the way precepts work in Buddhism is that you have the five foundational precepts that everyone takes, starting with lay practitioners, and then you add more precepts on and more precepts on and more precepts on, and then you go through bodhisattva precepts, you go through priesthood precepts, you go through bhikshu or monastic precepts, and they all have various levels of ways to live an ethical life and, and what that might entail. But the, the five basic ones, the five grave precepts they're often referred to, we do them a little differently than a lot of orders or a lot of sanghas. A lot of sanghas, like the first precept is, do not kill. Some make that a little grayer and say, refrain from killing. Which is your basic, don't do this. It's almost a little commandment-y that way. And one thing that the precepts are not are the equivalent of the um, Judeo-Christian uh, Ten Commandments or Rules of Leviticus. They're not don't do this. If you do, you're burning in hell for all eternity. No, no, no. Ours aren't like that. So for us, the first precept, our order, our sangha, says, I vow to support all living creatures and refrain from killing. It's do this. And if you do this, then you won't be doing that. I vow to respect the property of others and refrain from stealing. Okay, I'm not taking what isn't given to me. I'm respecting that it's yours. Vow to regard all beings with respect and dignity and refrain from objectifying others. In some sanghas, some orders, that don't have illicit sexual relations. Ours is a little bit broader, obviously. We're talking about not objectifying others. 
not setting up the me and you aspect of it so much as we're respecting the other person, but we're also respecting our self. We're not seeing the other person as an object of lust. We're seeing them on, on even footing. I vow to regard all beings with respect and dignity and reflect, fr refrain from objectifying others. Get it? We don't objectify. We respect others as if they were ourselves. I vow to be truthful and refrain from lying. Okay, that's pretty pretty easy. If you're telling the truth, then by its very nature, you're not lying. It's pretty much a one and zero on off binary thing. If you're telling the truth, you're not telling any lies. But we suggest that you tell the truth. And that turns into not lying. And the fifth precept is that we vow to maintain a clear mind and refrain from harming myself or others with intoxication. Some orders say, don't drink or use drugs. Some say, do not uh, indulge in intoxicating substances which produce uh, heedlessness. Um, there's any number of levels of it. Uh, personally, I'm, you know, one of those people that says, okay, I don't drink, I don't take drugs. Period. That's, that's my end of it. That's the way I maintain my mindfulness. How I maintain, maintain being heedful. Other people it is a little grayer with. And that's fine. Some people can have that glass of wine with dinner. Some people put up their feet and have a beer and watch the football game on Sunday. And it doesn't distract from their being mindful. Now you could say this is all a little bit fuzzy especially on that last one. Some of them are pretty, like I said, binary, on or off, true, false, truth, lying, that kind of thing. Three and five, they can be a little fuzzy sometimes. You know, the whole illicit sex thing and the whole, you know, indulging in intoxicating substances, things. Some people have varying degrees of gray in there. And that's okay. One thing that um, you'll see about the precepts is that if you ref if you don't follow them, it's not like you're going to burn in hell. But it's not like there won't be any consequences either. There's karma involved in all of our actions. And as to when that karma is manifested and in what way, I don't know. If I go out and get drunk and wrap my car around a tree, the karma may be pretty apparent and pretty instantaneous. If, however, I 
don't know, kill somebody, let's get two precepts knocked out of the way uh, at the same time. There will be karma involved in that also. Not only about the uh, breaking the precept against uh, intoxication and, and not being mindful, but also the refrain from killing part. Again, pretty immediate. There are others that, you know, maybe you tell a little lie here and it's not like there's going to be that cosmic lightning bolt smiting you. But that may set in motion a wheel of other actions that will be manifest. And notice that we say refrain from, not, you know, do not refrain from killing. The other thing about the precepts and whether you observe them strictly or give a little gray area to them is that <clears throat> excuse me depending on situation relationship and function there may be times where breaking the precept is actually correct action in the Lotus Sutra, for example, <clears throat> excuse me, there are some kids, they're in a burning building, and the Buddha, in order to get them out of the building, which is on fire, which will cause them great harm, he tells them, oh, there's this really cool cart outside. You should really come out and check it out. And technically, he lied to them. Bottom line in that, you know, binary, yes, no, one, zero, true, false. He told them a falsehood. But in that case, that was correct function in that situation. The idea of the precepts is that we lead an ethical life not only for ourselves and that, you know, we get the re reward of good karma and, you know, we avoid getting the bad karma, but we observe precepts for all beings. We observe them so that every sentient being can be led towards awakening to our own personal Vesak, our own collective Vesak, our awakening. Like I said, you don't necessarily have to observe the precepts. But if you're interested in awakening, I'd say there's probably no downside in observing the precepts if awakening is what you're interested in. And for me, <clears throat> that's certainly why I started with this. Now it's a little bit different. But in order for all sentient beings to awaken. There's no downside in our observing the precepts. And in July, some of us will be taking them. Some of us will be taking uh, an additional five for the Bodhisattva precepts. But we take them not just for ourselves, not to get some points or not to avoid getting yelled at 
but we do it for the sake of all beings.